Hello everyone and welcome to another interesting game from the Grand Chester. It's the Blitz edition of the of the Tata Steel India. Uh, Vidit versus uh, Nepo. It's a really interesting game. Uh, a lot of you have requested it uh, and for good reasons. Uh, so let's check it out. Uh, without further ado, uh, Vidit opens with Knight to F3. And a lot of you said that I should have mentioned in, in at least some of the videos uh, that uh, in, in the beginning of the fifth day, well, the second day of Blitz, uh, Magnus and Vidit drew their game in five moves. Magnus had the, uh, had the white pieces and on move five, Magnus offered a draw uh, and Vidit accepted. Uh, Magnus said later that he had uh, stomach issues and uh, that he just didn't uh, feel all right. Uh, I don't think Vidit was aware of this, he just accepted the draw. Uh, I don't think... Uh, uh, I don't think Vidit accepted the draw for no reason. I don't think anyone would accept a draw uh, on move 5. Uh, but it is the world champion, though, uh, that, that's, a, that's a free half a point. And, uh, well, he might have felt something, that something was off, and that's why he accepted. Uh, it's hard to say. Uh, but uh, there, now you know. And it's not, uh, uh, well, uh, as it is being played in India, uh, you don't, uh, I mean, you, you need time to, you know, adjust to, to the climate, to the, to the change in, in uh, food. Uh, so it, it, it's not uh, so uncommon that uh, someone would, uh, would uh, feel like that. Like 11-11 uh, pretty much lost every game in, in the blitz section. He lost over 50 rating points, so it uh, definitely took a bigger toll on him. And uh, if, if you remember when we were showing a Paul Morphy game or something like that, uh, when Morphy was traveling by boat and then he would, uh, I don't know, reach somewhere and then he would uh, immediately go and play chess and he would have a, well, not a bad result, he would still beat everyone, but it wouldn't be a clean Morphy, you know, uh, just annihilation. But then the second day when he got better, then he just obliterated everyone. Uh, so yeah, uh, that, that being said, now let's check out the game. Vidit opens with knight to f3, uh, the red is on the board, we have c5. Uh, c4 and now knight to c6. Uh, we have knight to c3 and the g6. Now preparing to think to the dark square bishop with e3 and knight to f6. Uh, we have d4, so this is ev everything standard. C captures on d4, e captures on d4 and d5. Uh, we have c captures on d5, knight captures and now queen to b3, putting pressure on the knight here. So Nepo defends with e6 and now bishop to b5, preparing to capture on c6, which will uh, mess up black's pawn structure and create uh, some weak pawns on the queen side, but on the other hand, Nepo gets to keep the bishop pair. We have bishop to g7, Nepo prepares the castle, captures, captures, and now uh, we have castles. Uh, Nepo also castles, and here rook to e1. So here, uh, like I said, Nepo still has the bishop pair. If this uh, bishop can find uh, a nice diagonal, maybe such as this one, then uh, then both of, both bishops will be on nice diagonals, and the bishop pair will should be fully operational. Uh, we have queen to d6 by Nepo, and now knight to e4, uh, kicking the queen back. And uh, we already had this position. Uh, Anish Giri had it against Mamed Yarov uh, in last year's Tata still, uh, but in Vikanze, and that game ended in uh, Giri winning the game but uh, Mamedyarov replied with queen to b4 and then Giri uh, stepped back with the queen with queen to, queen to c2 but here we have queen to c7 it is a new move by Nepo and it is as of move 13 that we have a completely new game so Vidit continues he develops the bishop bishop to d2 uh, he's expecting rook to b8 so queen to a3 might be uh, you know joined with bishop to a5 to, to attack the bla black queen we have rook to b2, now that uh, b8, now that the bishop has been developed, the queen can't really go uh, far because the b2 pawn would hang, so queen to a3, and now f6. Uh, again, one of the positions where it's okay to play f6, takes away the e5 and g5 squares from white's knight, also prepares g5 and uh, the expansion on the king's side. Uh, we have rook a to c1, uh, and now comes g5. We have h3, preventing the instant g4, also making some room for the king, and h5 by Nepo. Uh, and here, bishop to a5, like we discussed. So the queen is under attack. Uh, queen to d7, getting out of the way, and now knight to c5. Attacking the queen also with a double attack on the e6 pawn, as the rook also attacks that. Uh, we have queen to f7, and now Nepo wants to increase, uh, sorry, Vidit wants to increase the pressure uh, on the e6 pawn, which is a backward pawn, so you kind of hope it, it will be a weakness for a long time. Uh, rook to e4, he wants to play rook c to e1 and create more threats against the e6 pawn. And here, Nepo takes this opportunity as now the rook is in an awkward square with queen to g6. Now you cannot capture on e6 because the rook would hang, only the knight guards the rook here. 
uh, and also it prepares the advancement of the g pawn so the queen will nicely support the pawn we have rook c to e1 now ready to capture an e6 but now g4 uh, you have to react to this we have h captures h captures and now knight to d2 would be a bit too slow because f5 then comes immediately so first knight to h4 comes with an attack on the queen but queen to h5 now attacking the knight we have g3 and f5 now pushing the rook back and here uh well you have to move the rook otherwise you're gonna lose it so rook to e5 you could also go rook to e2 and then give nepo the move uh but vidit says i'm just gonna play rook e5 and the next move i'm gonna capture the e6 pawn and if you want to give up your rook uh, bishop well it's uh it's a really important piece your your dragon here is doing wonders for, uh, for the defense of the black king but nepo says uh it's not a problem nepo captures bishop captures on e5 uh we have rook captures on e5 and now uh, queen to h6 uh, so with ideas of, of infiltrating with queen to c1 check so it prevents this knight to d3 now the knight nicely blocks the c1 square and also the knight uh, supports uh, well kind of prevents uh, this pawn being pushed uh, all the way to f4 and it is interesting uh, you could try it but um, well the only reason why it doesn't work is bishop to d2 now you, you cannot capture or advance the pawn and uh, white will just pick up the pawn so that's why it doesn't work here we have bishop to a6 by nepo now attacking the knight here uh trying to get rid of the defender of both f4 and, and c1 uh and here vidit goes for bishop to d2 it does uh well it, it it does eliminate the bishop on a6 also uh the uh well it's basically a trade of bishops but the problem is that uh uh, uh nepo's queen will be able to infiltrate so here nepo says okay queen captures on d2 we have queen captures on a6 and now uh uh nepo needs to go rook to f6 he needs to prevent uh, this uh, pawn from being captured also uh there are, there are ideas of r just rook captures on d5 after one pawn uh, captures then the queen can capture the other one and then for example get g6 so you really need the rook on the sixth rank but here instead nepo uh, proceeded with the attack with f4 and this just doesn't work uh, because it allows the vidit rook to g5 which he plays uh nepo replies with king to h8 you don't want to go uh, anywhere along uh, the seventh rank because queen captures on a7 would uh, quickly end the game so king to h8 by nepo and now feel free to pause the video and try to find the winning move for uh, vidit while i give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on finding, uh, well, such a such a nice move. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's knight to g6 check. Now, you might be thinking, why are you asking us to find knight g6 check? It's, well, it's fairly obvious. Everyone saw it. Uh, well, not everyone. And, uh, well, again, for good reasons. Uh, because it does require uh, quite some calculation. Because after this check, the point is not to capture the rook here. The point is, if the king goes anywhere, uh, well, like the h file, then you just get uh, queen captures on a7 with check. King h6, and now knight captures on f4 that's the point now you have the threat of checkmate and it's uh, impossible to prevent this whatever you try let's say you prevent it this way then just rook h5 is mate uh, since the queen covers the g7 square you cannot go there uh, one of the reasons and another one is after knight to g6 check if you go king to g7 it's a bit different but not all that much still you get knight g captures on f4 it's important to eliminate the the f4 pawn also it comes with a discovered check so king f6 now you get rook captures on d5 and this is the move that was hard to find that's why uh, knight to g6 was was not all that um, uh, simple to play so here doesn't matter if this pawn captures or if this is if this pawn captures if this guy captures then queen captures on e6 if this captures then queen captures on c6 with check not much different uh, and now you can go either to g7 or to e7 let's say you go to e7 then it's just uh well queen to e6 check once you move the king king d8 queen to d6 check and now after the king moves you can let's say pick up the rook with check and now you're even up material and of course you were you will very quickly uh checkmate the black king so that's one way to do it uh after queen to c6 if you go to e7 if you go to g7 still doesn't really change all that much queen g6 check king h8 and now you get knight to e6 threatening mate and again there's very little you can do here uh so 
uh, if you block you like even queen to h6 is mate but a lot of very different well not h6 because uh, obviously the the queen can win uh, the white queen but uh, queen h5 check forces black to lose the queen and then it's mate so only one one of the reasons uh, so after king to h8 knight g6 is winning for vidit but vidit plays queen captures on a7 idea being uh, well, queen g7 will just be mate, so uh, let's let's just deliver that. But it doesn't work. Now, Vidit plays a move that completely loses the game. Now, feel free to pause the video and try to find it. It's actually a forced mate in eight for Nepo. Uh, so I'll, I'll give you a few, few seconds uh, if you want to try and find it. Uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on finding either one of the moves. Well, the second move is the crucial one. If you find the second move, then everything at, uh, ends in mate. Uh, but it's queen to d1 check. I know you all saw this one, uh, as it's the only useful check you can give. King to g2, and now the move you had to find, knight to e3 check. It's very important to allow rook captures on b2 to come with check, because you cannot afford any move to come without a check, because queen to g7 is mate. So, uh, what can you do here? If king to h2, it's very interesting because, again, you can follow up with check. And after white captures, again, you get this rook captures on b2 with check. And now you're just, uh, well, mate mating white. Uh, so, after knight e3 check, Vidit accepted the knight. But now we have rook captures on b2 check. Even giving up the rook. Now the knight captures. We have knight captures on b2. And here, again, continuing with check. Very important. f3 check. Now, if you move the king, king h2, it's not a problem. It's still a forced mate. Queen e2 check, king h1, uh, queen to f1 check, you'll go king h2. Now, queen to h3 check, forcing the king to g1, and now finally, queen to g2 will be mate. Uh, not uh, not just yet, uh, but uh, sorry, uh, not queen to g2, f2 will be mate. Uh, so, uh, there, there you have it. No idea why I played queen to g2. Uh, so, after e f3 check, we have knight captures on f3, uh, saying that, okay, let's give, up, give back some material, but it's uh, without, without any merit. Uh, here, Nepo just played queen captures on f3, and it was in this position that Vidit resigned the game, as since whatever he does, king h2 or king to g1, uh, he's getting made it on both accounts. If king h2, you're just going to go queen to e2 check, and then now the rook enters the game. Uh, king g1 or king to h1 doesn't really matter, just rook to f1 will be mate. So, of course, Vidit saw this, and after this queen captures on f3, uh, he resigned the game, which is very unfortunate for him since uh, he also had a, a very nice mating sequ sequence. Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's why I thought it was a fitting title. You know, if it wasn't losing, it'd be completely winning. So uh, I do hope you enjoyed that uh, uh, along with the game. Uh, I would like to thank Stephen Green and David Compton for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching and I will see you soon. Continuing uh, maybe with a few more games. We'll see if there were some other nice suggestions. If not, we're going to check up with some other suggestions. And then we are uh, ready to start uh, with our next big saga. So far, it seems to be the Paul Morphy saga. But you can still vote on the saga. Uh, the link to the voting poll is in the description below. So, you know, go, go wild. So, thank you all. I will see you soon. And have an excellent rest of your day.